Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to go inside our planet Earth and explore the inner structure of it using a very interesting applet from BBC. Anyway, welcome to What The Math. So what we're actually using is uh, what you can find in the uh, link in the description below. This is uh, made by BBC.com and it's a journey to the center of the earth. Unofficially inspired by the uh, Jules Verne story that basically d does have a lot of exploration of inner parts of the earth, but more officially is actually very, very realistic and also um, has some of the more recent findings all listed here in this really interesting app. So the way it works is basically you scroll up, scroll down to go up or down. And there's going to be two sides here. One side explores the actual uh, crust or I guess the earth part. And one side explores the uh, oceans and the water part. Now, um, I'm go only going to focus on some of the more interesting and possibly less when well known um, features, but there's actually so much information here that I totally just encourage you to explore this by yourself. So, and the first thing we're actually going to take a look at is at the depths of about 10 meters. So we're going to scroll down to about 10 meters. You'll see that there's um, the first few things you learn about are usually related to different animals and different uh, things we discovered around various archaeological sites, specifically burial sites. And there's also some more or less uh, rudimentary info like the uh, standard depth of a, an Olympic diving pool. But as you keep going lower and lower, you start discovering things you may have never known before. Like for example, seven meters is the maximum depth of a plant roots in a tropical forest. Um, or more interestingly, at about 10 meters, we discovered that this is where the nitrogen narcosis uh, equals to drinking one martini. N nitrogen narcosis is actually a very interesting topic, especially if you ever start scuba diving. It's essentially uh, being kind of unofficially drunk from too much nitrogen in your blood. And as you go deeper and deeper in the water, the amount of nitrogen actually increases and you become more and more drunk. And you'll see this increasing quite a lot as we go deeper. Um, at uh, the uh, depth of about 20 meters, it's two martinis. And every 10 meters, you basically get more and more drunk. I've actually experienced this myself diving once, and it does feel like you're totally not in control of your own actions because you do feel drunk. So you have to basically breathe a, a different mixture of air as you go deeper into the water. So here, you basically be become so drunk that your judgment is impaired and you start experiencing anxiety. This is kind of where I was. And it's not pretty, let's, let me put it that way. Anyway, we're going to keep going lower and lower. And a lot of the things here I'll be actually kind of skipping because I would like you guys to explore them yourselves. But at a distance of about 200 meters um, in the water, this is where we actually come to the so-called uh, twilight zone. This is basically where the sunlight starts uh, basically waning and uh, there's almost no sunlight at this point essentially. And this is where we come to a point uh, where the sunlit zone meets the twilight zone. In other words, the sunlight starts disappearing quite dramatically. So this is about 200 uh, meters deep in the water. And uh, right around here, 214 meters, this is actually the uh, current record for the deepest free dive. Meaning that diving without any breathing apparatus, just holding your breath, set by Herbert uh, Nietzsche of Austria. Pretty impressive. Uh, my uh, deepest free dive is probably like five meters. So this is not even comparing to what this guy was able to achieve. Anyway, let's keep going a little bit lower. Oh, well, actually, this is pretty interesting. This is uh, the depth of Greenbrier nuclear bunker, basically where US government would be hiding in case of a nuclear war. Uh, this used to be a secret for a very long time, but was declassified uh, several decades ago. And anyway, let's keep going. And um, at the depth of approximately, I think right here, yeah, 305 meters. This is actually, ironically, the depth of B-82 Earth penetrating nuclear warhead, meaning that that bunker up there would not survive this because the point of this um, warhead is to basically destroy those bunkers. So its maximum destructive depth is deeper than the actual bunker. V very interesting, anyway. Uh, the deepest scuba dive is coming up at 332 meters, uh, set by Ahmed Gabor um, in the Red Sea in Egypt. 
in 2014. And um, interestingly, this might get beat soon. The only reason he has the current record is because he was able to find a perfect mixture for his air and he was able to uh, basically do it really well. He did all the math perfectly in terms of what kind of air he needed to breathe to survive at this particular depth. Um, now, unlike a uh, common assumption, at this depth you don't really get squeezed by water because you're practically all water. It's really the air inside your lungs and your ears and other um, parts of your body where you have air that need to be equalized. And he was able to do this very well. I believe the actual dive took like 10 hours though, so there's that as well. Anyway, moving on to the next interesting achievement. And I think this is actually at 535 meters um, somewhere right here. Here, there we go. The deepest dive by a penguin. Now, that was very surprising the first time I discovered about this. Uh, and this is an emperor penguin from uh, Antarctica. They can dive up to 530 meters easily. Pretty, pretty impressive. And at 600 meters, we actually reach a very interesting line in the water known as the Sofar Channel. Now, this channel is actually um, used by both whales and the government and the submarines for long distance um, communication. Basically, between 600 and 1200 meters, that's when uh, your uh, typical sound wave in the water can actually travel tremendously large distances, like ridiculous distances. Like we're talking thousands of kilometers pretty easily. And so a lot of whales come down to this depth and basically start talking to each other. It's essentially kind of like the whale internet, except now it's populated by submarines, so they don't really like that. Anyway, uh, moving on to, well, actually right here. This is the deepest dive in the so-called atmospheric diving suit. And this is kind of what the more modern version of ADS suit looks like. Basically, it's sort of like the astronaut suits, but for underwater. And so here you can dive uh, really, really deeply with these. Um, and the current record is just over 600 meters. Anyway, moving on to... Uh, let's go a little bit deeper. Let's actually go to a depth of about 1000 meters. So as you can see over here, the depth is increasing quite dramatically. And uh, at this depth, interestingly, the pressure in the ground is approximately 330 atmospheres. Now, that's a lot of pressure. Actually, as it says here, it's same as four elephants balance on your head, weighing 28 ton tons in total. So the pressure in the ground is so high, obviously, because all of this rock above you is pushing down on you. Uh, but at the same time, if you actually, you know, if you have a hole in here, if it's just air, then the pressure is not actually that much. It's really the uh, actual rock that is being squeezed quite dramatically. And this is also where we reach the so-called midnight zone, where basically it's pretty much darkness everywhere in the water. And uh, as we keep going lower and lower, we discover the deepest bat colony, the end of the Sulfar Channel we just mentioned, and also, at 12, 18 meters, this is uh, where a typical great white shark uh, can be discovered, including also some of the uh, turtles that you may usually see closer to the surface, but we've actually found turtles in this area as well. I'm gonna keep going a little bit lower and at the depth of 2.3 kilometers in the water, the uh, atmospheric pressure is approximately 234 atmospheres. So not as high as the actual ground pressure because water doesn't have as much density. Um, but nevertheless, the atmosphere uh, or the, I guess the pressure that you would be experiencing here would be pretty high. So uh, most submarines would actually crack like eggs and the egg will actually also crack like an egg because of the ridiculously high pressure here. Now. Um, hypothetically, you could somehow try to survive in here as a human being if you were to find a way to basically not have any um, air inside your body, but it would be very, very difficult. Even the air bubbles inside your bones would most likely burst at this point. Although there is a potential, or I guess there's a, a bit of a scientific theory behind how to do this. But what is interesting is that at the depth of 2400 meters, we've actually seen a seal. We, we've actually seen an elephant seal, which kind of looked like this. And so here's a picture from National Geographic. Um, basically, they do have a very interesting trunk and they do look like seals. And obviously, they're also mammals. So 
uh, for a mammal, for a non-whale, uh, land-living mammal to, to dive this deep is actually quite impressive. Now, we've detected whales deeper, but uh, not seals. And this is definitely something that is extremely impressive, meaning that these animals can survive ridiculously high pressures um, and uh, obviously hunt there as well. Okay, let's keep going, and at 3800 meters, we're going to discover the remains of Titanic. While at the same time discovering what's known as the Totona Gold Mine in South Africa. This is actually the deepest destination for humans. Uh, the actual temperature of the rock here is about 60 degrees Celsius, and if you were to look up this mine, you would actually discover a pretty interesting uh, documentary by National Geographic where they go and explore this unusual place where basically the rock is really hot and you actually have to cool down the environment for people to work in there. A pretty interesting, pretty deep and pretty scary place to be, to be honest. Anyway, moving on to a very interesting location in the water. At 4.6 kilometers, we actually have found plastic uh, debris and all kinds of junk that we usually associate with, uh, well, garbage. We found our own garbage this deep in the water. Now, that's a little bit unsettling. Oh, and by the way, uh, even though it may seem like we actually have gone pretty deep already, uh, we're basically not even scratching the surface of our planet just yet. Even though so much stuff already happened, we're not really that deep just yet. So we are reaching bottoms of certain seas and oceans, like Arctic Ocean, but, uh, and here's the deepest shipwreck, but we're really just starting to get into the actual crust of our planet. As a matter of fact, let's actually go to the bottom of the known ocean trench. So right around, right here, the depth of approximately 11 kilometers or 11,000 meters, more like 11,020 meters, I believe. Uh, this is the Mariana Trench, the ocean's deepest point. Um, where apparently James Cam Cameron, the director of, of several movies, including The Abyss and The Titanic, uh, decided to go and take a look at it, and he descri described it as a sterile, almost desert-like place. Now, um, what is interesting about this place is that there's definitely life there, and we've actually discovered certain or organisms there, uh, but this is a place where there were less people than there were on the moon. So we had more visitors on the moon than we did in this particular region of our own planet. So that's the end of the oceans. The rest of the stuff here is actually going to be all entirely just related to Earth and crust. And I think one of the more um, interesting first locations is actually right here. 15 kilometers is the depth of the supervolcano known as Yellowstone. Um, and you may know this volcano because it's right in the middle of the US. As a matter of fact, here's a map of possible Yellowstone supervolcano eruption with a kill zone, primary ash zone, and secondary ash zone. As a matter of fact, uh, there's a very high chance this volcano will erupt in the next uh, few thousand years. And that would be quite disastrous for the United States and parts of Canada. Uh, but it, right in the middle right there, uh, at a depth of 15 kilometers, that's where the supervolcano has what's known as the magma chamber. Basically, all of its magma is stored there and is slowly brewing and getting more pressurized and slightly hotter. So we're going to keep going down. And at the depth of about 30 kilometers, we're actually going to discover our first interesting location. This is where the crust kind of ends and the upper mantle begins. And there's a term for it, actually. It's known as the Mohorovicic discontinuity. It's named after the basically the uh, guy who explained it. It's the boundary between Earth's crust and the mantle. And um, this is where we now kind of start de digging deep into the Earth uh, that's not as rocky, I guess, but is a little bit more uh, mobile and a little bit more almost like a liquid, essentially. So the pressure here is about 10,000 atmospheres, quite a lot, and the temperature starts increasing quite dramatically as you go, as you can see by the color. Now, um, th this a lot of the earthquakes actually start forming here, so between 50 kilometers and 700 kilometers, that's when you'll start discovering most of the earthquakes, and the temperature starts increasing dramatically. 150 kilometers, this is where diamonds usually form, you can find quite a lot of really interesting, um, not just rocks and not just 
precious rocks, but lots of different minerals that you would not find anywhere else on the surface of the planet being formed in this region. Uh, as a matter of fact, at a depth of about 500 to 600 kilometers, that's where we think, so somewhere here, that's where we think a lot of the Earth's water is stored. We think that double the amount of surface water is actually stored inside of our planet in uh, various minerals that are in this region. And then we reach uh, the end of upper mantle and we go into the lower mantle at the depth of about 750 kilometers at pressures of about 240,000 atmospheres. That's like 3,280 elephants balance on your head. That is a lot of weight. As you can see, there's not a lot of information here, mostly because we don't really know much about all of this area and stuff. This is all still the unknown to us. Lower mantle ends at about 3,000 kilometers and outer core begins. This is known as the Gutenberg discontinuity and uh, the uh, atmosphere here is about 1.3 million atmospheres so tr quite dramatically higher then we don't really know much about all of this and we reach the um, inner core at the depth of about 4140 kilometers and suddenly the atmosphere is atmospheric pressure is 3.2 million atmospheres and then we reach the uh, the core 6.3 thousand um, kilometers, 3.6 million atmospheres, 47,000 elephants balanced on your head. Now, at this uh, area, you basically get a big congratulations for reaching the end, reaching the center of the Earth. And interestingly, the gravity here is pulling you equally in all directions, but obviously it's very hot here, super high pressure. So if you were, by some unknown chance, uh, still alive until this point, then this is where you kind of sort of die. Now, interestingly, uh, there is definitely a lot more to explore when it comes to reaching the insides of dif different planets, because for Earth, this is true. For Earth's composition and for Earth's structure, uh, this is kind of what we think is happening here. But if you were to go to a different planet, or specifically if you were to go to a gas giant or ice giant, you would not find the same structure at all. I've briefly uh, mentioned what the structure of Saturn is like in one of the previous videos I made on falling into Saturn. But if you were to fall into Earth and go through the entire uh, Earth's surface up to the Earth's core, this is what you would experience. And I think this is an awesome website to explore this. So give it a try yourself. Maybe you'll learn something from using this website. It only takes a few minutes. And the link for this is in the description below. Anyway, thank you so much for watching, guys. I'll see you tomorrow. Come back tomorrow to learn something else. Space out. And as always, bye-bye.